So in the second part of what do teachers do all holiday, we're going to be having a look and a talk about how I organize my days so that I can stay productive during this time period. Now, although this will be a useful video to watch for everyone, I especially want students in year nine to year 13 and students in university to pay close attention because during your downtime, it can sometimes get hard to stay focused on the things that are important while also enjoying yourself. But I assure you, when you implement this method, there's a 90% chance that you'll be more productive, you'll get more done, and your self-esteem will just continue to keep growing. Now, you guys might be familiar with my timetable, which I've linked in past videos. Um, quite a few of you have downloaded it already and you said that you'll find it useful and I'm happy that I can provide something that you guys can use and that it doesn't cost you a dime. I'm just happy that you're benefiting from that. But here's the thing. I personally find that my timetable is super duper useful in terms of consistency, i.e. term time, when we have that rigid structure. But during times of inconsistency or where things aren't so structured, where things can jump in out of nowhere or the spontaneity or there's nothing really locking you to a schedule like holidays, I find that that timetable or using the timetable just isn't, just doesn't really work. So I figured out this brilliant tactic instead. So at the beginning of the holiday period, I lay out a set of goals which I hope to reach by the end of the holiday. So let's take a look at this. So here's some examples of my current goals. So one, plan new lessons for autumn term. Two, complete lines and flats for arcs on chapter seven. That's a comic. Upload 100 videos by the end of summer. I think I've told quite a few people about that. Four, create three full high quality illustrations. Five, complete Enkari. That's another one I'm working on. And six, read half the books in the book pile. You might, you might have seen those in the last um, episode in this series, the first one. There's a few more on here that I'm not going to share because they're not public facing. These are public facing um, goals, which you guys will see evidence of by the end of the holiday. I either would have reached them or I wouldn't have. And you can see that on my Instagram, Facebook or here on YouTube. But these goals are also SMART targets. That's S-M-A-R-T. Now, if you're not used to SMART targets or SMART goals, then um, I'll do a video on that later on, but you can go and Google what it means. They're very, very good targets to have. But that's what those are. That's the overview for the entire holiday. Now is where the fun bit begins. Because during holiday, because life's so unpredictable, I can't plan an entire week ahead of time. Yeah, there might be things where I'm just like, okay, on Monday, this is gonna happen. On Tuesday, I'm going here. On Wednesday, I'm meeting this person. But when it comes down to the small nitty gritty and the hour by hour breakdown, I can't plan everything. So what I do instead is this. I plan no more than two days ahead and I do it the night before. So on a Sunday night, I'll sit down and I'll make a list on a Word document or anywhere else, it could be notes, but I tend to stick with a Word document and it will look like this. So you see here, I have a bunch of things, writing scripts, recording videos, uploading videos, beginning an illustration, contacting a client, working for a certain amount of time on my comic and to read, which of course was one of my main targets. And that's the list. Now, the goals for the whole holiday, they were in priority order. So the whole planning new lessons for autumn term is my top priority that has to be done by the end of summer term. I cannot mess up on that. Um, whereas reading the books was at the bottom of, the, of my priority list. But with this, there's no priority order. In my head, there might be a priority, but I'm not writing these down in order. I will do what I want in whatever order I want, as long as the tasks get done. What I'll sometimes do is do things like work on an art song for an hour, then go and read, and then return to working on an art song for a bit longer than I can say that that two hours on art song is done. I might even come back and do a bit more, and then it's overdone. <laughs> So the key is that we're breaking everything down into small manageable chunks and manageable tasks that don't seem too hard or too daunting. Now, when I complete something, what I do is I write down done next to it and I feel good. I know that I'm one step closer to achieving my goals. If I get to the end of the day and I can't finish the whole list because I'm tired, because something came up or I'm experiencing some form of academic ego depletion, this is about 60% of the time, I won't finish everything. I'm fine with that. And the reason that I'm fine with that is because I purposefully design my list so that it has about 10% more than I think I can handle. So by the end of the day, a lot of time, I'll have one or two tasks which are not done. 
but then sometimes I'll do all of them and I'll be super proud of myself. I've gone beyond my limit. It's all about aiming for things slightly beyond your reach because it keeps you hungry and it encourages you to keep pushing yourself in a healthy and controlled way, of course. I'm not gonna put 20 things down and then feel disappointed because I only do three or push myself excessively so that I, I'm useless for the end of the week or I, I get sick. So when I get to the end of the day, the tasks that aren't done, I don't mind about. It's not the end of the world. All I have to do is just carry it across to the next day and add it onto that list. And that's how I organize my days and how I've continued to pump out comics, illustrations, videos, novels, and more over the last decade or so, while still continuing to have piles of time to spend with my family, my friends doing things I enjoy like gaming or watching movies or anime or anything like that. So to summarize, if you're struggling to stay organized and productive during the holiday, or if you just want to increase that productivity and organize yourself even more and you know make yourself feel good. One, write down a list of smart goals or targets that you want to achieve by the end of the break or holiday. Two, at the end of each day, write a list of all the things you want to complete the following day. Depend on how you deal with failure. Decide whether you put more than you may be able to handle or not and how much more that is. Number three, do the task in any order. Make sure to mark them off as done when you complete them. Four, relax and take breaks whenever you want. Just make sure that about 90% of that list is done by the end of the day. Anything incomplete gets taken onto the next day. Five, just repeat it day after day after day after day and watch the change that it makes in your life. So that's all for today. Hopefully you found it useful seeing how I, a teacher, an art teacher, plan my holidays and hopefully it's motivated you to rethink how you can make the best of your breaks when school's not in and how you can become more productive as, as a whole over the course of the school year. Now I'm super interested in knowing what methods you use to organise yourselves during term time and during break so let me know in the comments down below. Also don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on videos to do with GCSEs, A-levels, university and beyond and art education and anything linked in with those. Be sure to check out the videos that are coming up on screen now. Um, I'm sure that you'll find them useful. And that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Until next time.